into their lives. And I've never seen, like David said, the righteous for Satan or the, his seed begging bread. They may have gotten a negative report that day. The doctor have said some bad stuff. And they were ready to do what Sister Wendy said, throw in the towel. But guess what? God threw it back at them. God will throw the towel back at you. Hallelujah. He doesn't throw it back at you to hurt you. He throws it back at you to say, come on, pick it up. Stand up. Let's move forward. We're living in the last days. How many know we are? We have women trying to make it all kinds of ways and not always the holy way. Amen. They're looking for a man to supply all their needs. God said, I will supply all your needs. So young women, I don't care if you're young and old, you don't need a man to supply your need. You need a God to supply your need. So when you're going out there trying to look for every boy, every man, trying to fix your stuff up and give you what you need and pay your light bill and pay your gas bill, guess what? Get a job. Ask God to help you get a job. Hallelujah. Be self-sufficient. Hallelujah. Stop relying on others to help you. You can help yourself. Hallelujah to God. Stop worrying about what's going to happen. God's got a way. Somebody said it is mighty sweet. You can lay your burdens at his feet. He knows the road. He'll carry your load. God has a way, and it's mighty sweet. So you said, teach them, teach them. Now we're going to Titus, and I'm, I'm bringing it in. We as aged women, and I'm not talking about because we're so old, chronologically, but I'm speaking of us that have, he calls the old because they're, what? That they're wise, then they know the way, and the young because they're strong. So there's a reason why we've lived X amount of years. Uh -huh. We didn't live to keep acting like we're 21 while we're 62. you 62, act your age, hallelujah. Be who you are. You know what? Enjoy the age that God allowed you to see. Amen. Don't be ashamed of who you are. Too many times we are ashamed of the status in life that we are in. But if we learn to be content in whatsoever state we are in, God, hallelujah, will help us. I've seen him do it too many times. I've seen him when I was a single woman. I told the married women. I told the minister's wives. When I was a single woman and I met my husband today, I had a good job. I worked for the government. I ran the mail and records department for the Atomic Energy Commission. I handled top secret all over the place. I was working in a vault. I had to keep secrets. Oh, my God. And I, I, was, I was 20, like 20. Four twenty-five. I was young. I was young, black, and stupid at the time. That's before I got saved. And I didn't appreciate what God had given me. He gave me, the woman, did, she, didn't, she did not promote me from steps. Y'all know that work for the government? You get promoted from step to step. That lady promoted me from a grade to another grade higher because apparently I was doing all right with the job. But you know what? I left, the house. I left that job on a Friday unsaved, came back on a Monday, filled up with the Holy Ghost. And when I came back, that's when I got that raise. Hallelujah. But you know what? If I was relying on some, some dude to fix and take care of me, I don't think I would have gotten that job. I don't know if I would have gotten the Holy Ghost. But my heart was right that night. And I learned to lean and depend on Jesus. So when I found, when God found, no, when God allowed my companion to find me, he found a good thing. <laughs> Hallelujah. But you know what? You got to know that. You got to know that. Oh, yeah, I'm all that in a bag of chips. You got to know that. You got to be sure of yourself. Hallelujah to God. You can't be sure of yourself when you don't, when you doubt the God that has put his spirit in you. Know who you are. You are fearfully and wonderfully made. And marvelous are the works of the hand. Hallelujah. God put his spirit. When he made Adam, he put us, he put us in there too. You know that. Created he them. You know what? Male and female created he them. So the spirit man, male man, and the spirit woman, female man, was created by the God of the universe. Hallelujah. So his spirit resides in us. Hallelujah. So you don't let no man walk all over you because you are God's woman. Hallelujah to God. 
You got to know who you are. Hallelujah. You better know who you are because the maker, oh my God, do you know the maker that created you? If you do not know, oh my God, the manufacturer, what you were designed to do, it is inevitable you will be abused. You must know. You must know what you're made of and who made you. And the God that we made that made us don't make no junk. Ah, God. He does not make junk. Hallelujah. He makes great things. And if you don't know what your purpose is, just pray. Ask God, what is it is my passion for you, God? I want to do your will. So that's why it's important. You don't lay down unless somebody beat you up. You don't sit down unless somebody beat you with their words. That's called abuse. Amen? And God may be stronger than it. Don't allow it. Ah, if you think you're going to do that to me, you got to get to stepping, brother. Because you know what? God made me fearfully and wonderfully. And you know what? When you go, there will be others to come and just step. When I met Bishop, I was engaged. But he wasn't the one. He wasn't the one. He wasn't the right one. I was engaged. But the Lord said, that's not, that's not your husband. And it hurt my soul. It hurt me. I said, I have to tell this good person that I can't marry. I'm saved. He's saved. But I said, the Lord didn't tell me. Now, he told, he said, the Lord told him I was supposed to be his wife. Well, y'all watch that too, okay? All right. You praying and fasting too. And guess what? If God can speak to him, guess, what? guess who else he's going to speak to? He's going to speak to you too. Now, if he's a God that God of the universe that knows everything, he's, got, he's a big enough God to share with you who, your, who the next person in your life is going to be. Well, that, I didn't, my, my deceased brother who was, who was saved at the time, and a wonderful man said, he said, sis, did God tell you? I said, no, I've been fasting and praying. I never got a word. He said, well, I think you better make a decision. Well, I made that decision quick and in a hurry. And it wasn't too terribly long. I, I lay before God. I said, Lord, if you have them, send them. If not, I'll be satisfied with you. And guess what? He used another young lady to go out to Langley Air Force Base and witness to a bunch of guys. And they came to the church. He was a saved one. The other two weren't and got saved. And guess what? The rest is history. The rest is history. Amen. I had to wait a while. It didn't happen overnight now. I had to wait a while. But you know what? I had to show myself as a woman of God. He had to respect me as a woman of God. And I believe that I carried myself in such a way that he would respect the God in me. It God in me. Now, I used to ask him, what, what drew you to me? And I'm not going to tell you all the stuff he said that drew, me, drew him to me. But anyway... But he had his reasons. <laughs> but one of the reasons was he could see Christ in my life. Teach the young women, Titus 2, and I'm almost done. We as the aged women have to teach. There is a biblical example of what we as aged women in Christ turn to Titus 2. And we're going to be done in just a second. And here's what it tells us. It teaches them, and I may paraphrase it a little bit, teaching them to behave as becoming holiness. If I, was, if I was living all beneath my privileges and I was loose out there, I don't think I would have been married to the bishop that I'm married to today. He would, he, would have, he would have kept looking. Amen? You don't want them to keep looking. You want them to stop right there. When You want them to stop in their tracks. And when they see you, that's why it's important to dress. Dress right. Dress right. Dress right. Modest apparel. I'm not saying you got to be the floor sweeper. <laughs> I'm not saying you got to look like, you know, dress in a modest way. Amen. We're not going to teach no dress today, but just dress in such a way that you don't, you wouldn't mind the Lord himself coming and seeing you stand before him. Amen. So you can do that. You can do that. And God had, you got the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost will teach you that. Amen. So it says, it says, teaching them to behave as becoming holiness. Number two, do not be false accusers. Don't spread gossip. Don't nobody want to hear no gossip. Don't start no scandal. I know we know about scandal. Uh-huh. Don't, y'all know, don't act like y'all don't know about scandal. Y'all know about scandal. Y'all know about scandal. Anyway, don't spread gossip. Don't talk about the president and his wife and his female friend. 
Don't slander nobody else. Amen. Don't let that be on your, on your lips. Amen. Don't talk about the preachers of L.A. I don't care what they do. That's their business. God sees them. It ain't my business. Amen. What they do is between them and God. God will deal with them accordingly. Amen. Amen. You know them that labor among you. Amen. Let your yay be yay and your nay. Uh-uh. Don't, be no, don't talk out of both sides of your mouth. It's trying to cover all bases. Yay means yay. No means no. Don't be given to much wine. That's what the word says. I say don't be given to no wine. <laughs> I change it a little bit, amen. Why? Because what? My wine is a what? A mocker. Strong drink is raging. That's, that'll mess you up, okay? Don't do it. We want to be teachers of good things. Tell them, tell, them, tell them to come to the house of God. When you see them missing women of age and women of, 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 the, of the household of faith, when you see women missing church services a lot, Find them. Call them. Talk to them. Baby, where you been? Are you okay? What's going on? You know what? Because they may have slipped a little bit. Encourage. That's what we do. Heart to heart. Face to face. Tell them you can make it. Come on. Don't, don't, you, don't you give up hope. Don't you let that joker take you out of here, okay? He's not worth it. Talk, talk to them straight talk. Because you know what? The world is talking some stuff to them. So tell them that you can make this journey. I'm a witness. You can make it. I had to wait six years. A whole time. A lot of times she told me time. So you know what? The ministry now is we must, as women of God, invest.